you're, you're with, with the, the Break Breaker Leggers. Leggers. And we are in London's West End at the Noel Coward Theatre. To see the play, Quiz. So stay tuned to find out how many legs. Whether it's Break a Leg or, or a Leg It. <laughs> lovely people go any further to make sure you've always got your finger on the theatrical polls the theatre news reviews and interviews pop down hit subscribe and you'll be the first to know about all the stagey goings on yeah please comment about this show or any other productions you are excited you are seeing anything you care about join our lega theatre community please do so we're here at the Noel Coward to see a brand new play by Mr James Graham we love James Graham we've got to say we've loved him from this house yeah um, uh, Labour of Love, Inc. which he won an award for, Inc. Yeah. Um, loads of stuff. We've been desperate to see this. We have, indeed. Originally, the production started at the Chichester Festival Theatre uh, last year, before finally heading up to London, driving up the motorway, and landing right here at the Noel Coward Theatre. Um, Chichester Festival, um, the artistic director, is a chap called Daniel Evans, who is actually the um, director for this piece. Now, Daniel was quite a very accomplished performer, and now has crossed over to the creative side and being the director. Um, the recent production at the New London Theatre of Showboat was directed by him. Yes. American Buffalo yes. we saw. Yes, the Wyndham's just behind where we are now. Which was a brilliant production as well. Yeah, so had a great a cast, stuff. that one. Yeah, uh, yeah um, this show itself is the story, um, it's based on reality. It's sort of a dramatisation of a real life scandal. And that scandal was the 2001 Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Coughing Scandal, where Major J... Um, Charles Ingram actually um, cheated his way to a million pounds, allegedly. Wow, so interesting, scandalous stuff. That's that's the good thing about James Graham. He likes to comment on actual real events that has happened. He's a good kind of historian, although this isn't too far in our distant history. No, but I suppose it will be something that um, people talk about for a long time. You know, when it's such a high-profile thing, like a million-pound quiz show, um, then you know it's what a great thing to explore so we're looking forward to getting in the show is two hours and 30 minutes long including a 20 minute interval so we'll catch you again then so we've come to the interval of quiz here at the Noel Coward Theatre which means it's time for the Breaker Leggers 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown, breakdown. Go. Go. what do you think so far yeah it's okay um, it's, it's lacking a bit of drive for me. There's no real new writing in this. It's not a story that's been told in a really original way. It's just been pieced together. What about you? Um, I'm quite enjoying it. It's really nice staging. Entertaining. Um, it's telling the story of um, quizzes in general. So as with normal James Graham, I feel as if I'm learning something. Um, very interactive as well. So in terms of audience, it's um, we're being engaged. Bring on the second act. So we've come to the end of Quiz here at Noel Coward Theatre, so what did you make of that? I thought it was entertaining overall. I think the production values involved with it really do bring the piece to life. I've got to say on paper, it's probably not my most favourite James Graham. It's again an observation, but much of the text has come from live transcripts, actual you know, dialogue that has happened and there's very little dramatic license being imposed from what I could see. And as a result, it felt more like a documentary than a piece of dramatic art. What did you think? Um, I thought it was okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the whole piece was about, although it's about the um, about how they cheated. Ultimately, it's, it, did they cheat? It seems more to be a piece about the justice system, about jury by media and people's opinion. And yet, if you're actually presented with the facts and know what happens in a courtroom, which um, we learn that here in the UK, we don't do that, whereas they do in other countries, so comments on that as well, then you are privy to certain information. Um, because you're given a vote at the interval and a vote at the end as to whether you think they're innocent or guilty. And that vote does change, so um, it, uh, the piece seemed to be a lot about bias, um, but it was okay. Yeah, I, I think ultimately you, when you're dealing with right and wrong and you're dealing with 
someone being portrayed as a victim. In this case, you were asked the question, is the victim the people that were caught up in the situation, or is it the multi-million pound production company? And in either one of those instances, I think you've got to care, and I didn't particularly care either way. You know, for, for me, um, they, these people that were accused of fixing a game played a game. They played the game to their set of rules, not the rules that were particularly dictated, perhaps. But do you know what? I don't think those things were laid down clear enough in the first place. I'm not sure what they agreed to pre-show. I don't know what the connotation is for a contract that they signed, you know, production company. And as a result, I just thought, has anyone really told them not to do what they're doing? And I just ultimately, I fell by the end of it. I just didn't care either way. Yeah. Um there are some nice creative touches in terms of audience participation and a comment on quizzes and people's, well, I guess the nation's, just people's engagement in wanting to be entertained. And you've got a pub quiz in there, which is interesting, which is yeah. a little bit fun, a little bit gimmicky, um, nice uses of audience. They kind of reenact past game shows and bring out some audience members. Yeah, as a retro that. piece, I enjoyed that kind of. I also, I also enjoyed a look at what is entertainment and we sort of have we matured as a nation now because some of the things that we used to think were actually great and fun and interesting or I look at now with complete and utter oh like how was that ever any good why did we sit through this I thought that was nice and reflective and um, there's a yeah. recent BBC quiz show called press the button or the button or something like that the button which heart heart back to that old style of interactive quiz show and I, I watched it for about five minutes and thought oh my god this is utter crap and it reminded me of those sort of 90s things that like I say once we thought were good and now we have grown up I mean it does touch on what makes a good idea what is a good format for a game show and it talks about you know kind of business the apprentice and will it ever float or even like dropping people onto an island and letting them survive <laughs> how would that survive and or putting everybody into a house with lots of cameras around there's these new ideas and you think that's never going to work and yet that is the entertainment we watch today yeah. so this is an interesting format but I think on the whole as a piece I think I agree I didn't I'm not entirely sure what it was, but I didn't quite care. I kind of got a bit switched off. And I'm not sure if it's also, so it's whether it's the stuff that happens in the second act is almost exactly the same stuff that happens in the first act. So we kind of know what happens, but we just kind of replay it, see a little bit of before that happened and a bit of after, um, which get is a bit clever more and nice. You get a bit of context. Different angle. But at the same time, I wasn't entirely amazed by it. It didn't blow me away. No, um, I've got to say though that the, 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 the thing that was engaging was the production and uh, certainly a few of the performances. In terms of production, Tim Reed is the video designer. I like the use of video in this. Um, being in a studio setting, I drew natural parallels to Network that we saw. Um, and you know what, it was a bit tighter than Network actually. I thought Network at times was a little bit sloppy, you know, like with a delay and things. There was a massive delay with Network. Yeah. I mean, we saw it early on, I think, so I'm not sure if that was tidied up, but this was very slick, very sharp in terms of... Yeah, so well done, Tim Reed. Um, also, Naomi said as the movement director. Now, I don't know if James writes in these sort of choreographed moments. Um, yeah, it was a really nice one in the second act. Yeah, every single show we've seen of James, this house, uh, not every single one, but certainly this house, Inc. and this, have scenes that are a pretty much a dance almost. They're, they're a bit of a stage um, choreography, isn't there? Staged movement, mm. yeah, to, to music, but drives the piece forward, sometimes with songs, sometimes just as a movement piece in yeah. a way and I like that and I also like the work of Robert Jones as set designer and Tim Lutkin as lighting they must have worked together really tight on those because for, for me those two things were so in tune with one another um, uh, it worked really really well so great work performance wise was there anyone that stood out particularly to you I mean the, task, the, the cast is well cast yeah very I capable very capable, I thought they suited their roles absolutely fine. Um, I think if anything, the one um, role that people, that may stay in it is the Chris Tarrant character. Yeah, the actor. Keir Charles. He gets quite a lot of stuff and he gets to really 
accentuate and amplify the comedy characteristics of Chris Tarrant. Yes, I also very much liked, um, I liked the actress playing Diana Ingram, Stephanie Street. I thought she was really good. I thought she was convincing, probably more so than the actor playing Charles Ingram, actually. And also Henry Pettigrew as Adrian Pollock as the brother. I thought he did a good job. Yeah, it's only a cast of 11 and they are running around doing quite a bit, actually. Um, so, yeah, it was okay. It was good. Yeah, cast-wise. Um, I was going to say, I also agree, it did move very well in terms of direction. Um, the pace was there, I think, as well. I don't think it was lacking pace. The scenes moved very fast. The lighting and the set helped amplify that and move it along. Um, I think it's just in the, probably in the substance of the piece, pulling it together. He usually does political stuff, which we say is quite a safe bet for James Graham, because it's very dramatic and highly charged and very strong opinionated characters usually clashing horns. Um, with this it was much more storytelling, just letting us know a story, but which they're... executed okay. Yeah, and I mean well. well tied together in part, but much of the work has been done for Graham with the fact that these dialogues, this transcript exists in the public forum. And yeah, he does some fantastic research, yeah. because you, you can tell it comes from a place of intelligence and research and understanding and relaying that information and knowledge. Well, I bet you're wondering how many legs we're going to give um, quiz. quiz here at the Noel Coward Theatre. We are going to give three three legs for quiz. We apologise, by the way, if we're very close to the screen. <laughs> our, our, our lens has gone a bit screwy. Here. So um, we're, we're, it's just our faces yeah. today, just our faces, but we have got three fingers and three legs just here. Yeah, we have. But, um, back to the point. Um, back to the point. Yeah, I'd say it's probably not my, f it's probably my least favourite of James's work that I've seen. Um, I, I, I love the high drama and high stakes stuff I've seen him do. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I've taken away from this and I, I fear relatively little. However, it is still a very, um, it's a good piece of theatre, good yeah. piece of writing, good performances. It's, a, it's an enjoyable couple of hours. We were saying, actually, amateur companies, this would be a great one for amateur companies to put on. Absolutely. Because it's quite um, small, intimate, I think it would work well out nationally and regionally. It's a very much a British um, story. Piece, story because it obviously happened in Britain. It has Chris Tarrant, so everyone will know Chris Tarrant. Millionaire was massive in the day, so it would be quite resonant. In that regard. It would definitely sell out in the regions, I yes. think we are saying. So, so I'd recommend this as one of those pieces. Yeah, if you're an amateur theatre director, take a look at the script, see what you think. Anyway, that's just what we that's think. just what we thought. What did you think? Have you yeah. seen this? Or have Let you seen any know. other James Graham? Yeah, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. We're the Breaker Leggers. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.